scripture reading today comes from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 19 through 25. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. One of the longest studies of adult life made a surprising finding. Our relationships and how happy we are in our relationships has a powerful influence on our health. Taking care of your body, that's important. Tending to your relationship is also a form of self-care. More than money, relationships are what make people happy throughout their lives. And those ties my mic's cutting in and out. So we're going to switch. One of the world's longest studies of adult life made a surprising finding. Our relationships and how happy we are in our relationships has a powerful influence on health. Taking care of our body, that's important, but tending our relationships is also a form of self-care. More than money, more than fame, close relationships are what keep people happy throughout their entire lives. And those ties protect people from life's discontents. How they help to delay mental and physical decline and are better predictors. They are better predictors of long and happy lives than social class, than IQ, even genes. That's right, this study was initiated in 1938, with 268 Harvard graduates, who of course were all men at that time, the men was subsequently in, extended to include women and inner city participants of the greater Boston area. The findings proved true across populations. Isn't that amazing? I read about this study in the Harvard Gazette in an article by staff writer Liz Mineo. The role of genetics proved less important to longevity than the level of satisfaction with relationships in midlife, which is now recognized as a, a good predictor of healthy aging. So if you're in your 40s or 50s, you need to get yourself some good friends if you haven't so far. Also debunked was the idea that people's personalities are set like plaster by the age of 30 and can't be changed. Oh, it's set. That's who they are. Well, apparently, we do not have to be as rigid as previously thought. Psychiatrist George Valiant led the study from 1972 to 2004, and he wrote that when the study began, nobody cared about empathy <laughs> or attachment. But the key to healthy aging, he said, is relationships, relationships, relationships. Not location, location, location. Relationships. The current director of the study, Robert Waldinger, said in his TED Talk, good relationships don't just protect our bodies, they protect our brains. And those good relationships don't have to be smooth all the time. Some of our octogenarian couples could bicker with each other day in and day out. But as long as they felt they could really count on the other, when, going got, when the going got tough, those arguments did not take a toll on their memories. And loneliness kills, he said. It's as powerful as smoking or alcoholism. 
And here we are in an experience none of us has any experience in. We didn't go to school. We didn't get training or have life experience to teach us how to live in and through a pandemic with staying power, with perseverance, with resilience, mental, emotional, and physical. Here we are doing something we were not prepared for, but have to learn how on the job, as it were, like making the airplane while we're flying it. But I'd say there are many ways we have been prepared. And I dare say that many of you, because you invested in building spiritual and emotional strength and resilience before this time, you're finding that in your toolbox, there are some very helpful resources. Still, it, it is so much, it is so much to be separated from the relationships that bring meaning to our lives and that have for so long. Even with this virtual world that the people of 1918 didn't have, I mean, they got through it in two, for two years of pandemic. They didn't even have what we have. But even that we have this, we still long to be together in 3D. Perhaps some of us took for granted we'd be able to go to church next Sunday <laughs> and we chose to remain home or do something else. Now, I have no problem with people choosing to do something other than Sunday morning church. There are other times to do church together, for sure. And sometimes what we need to do and what God calls us to do when the rest of the church is worshiping may be different, and that's okay. It is interesting, though, how much we miss something when it is no longer an option. The line from Hebrew, Hebrews that really sounds different for me today is this one. Not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some. I, I guess this community had problems with turnout at worship, <laughs> like lots of churches today. Church attendance has been down Across the board, I don't care what kind of church it is, I don't care how big or how small it is, that's been the trend before COVID. Maybe the shine of the new faith was fading for these, this community as followers of the way found that walking the everyday mundane path of faith wasn't so exciting anymore. Maybe when the expectation on the part of some of them that the day of the Lord is going to come any day, and it didn't, they wondered, well, what's the point? And maybe some of them just had to go to work. That's true, too. Well, the writer puts it this way, that they were neglecting to meet. Clearly, for the early church meeting, gathering as the body of Christ was essential. And we are in a different dilemma. Reading those words in our circumstances feels like an uncaring admonition. We can't meet, thank you very much. Well, well, actually, we could because the county has to let us meet indoors with much stricter protocols. And some faith communities are rolling the dice and taking the risk. We are choosing to not roll the dice with your lives and ours, quite frankly. Not meeting has been a hardship. It has been a sacrifice. We know the benefits of community life in Christ. We know that this is not a solo endeavor. The life of Christian discipleship requires companions. And sharing in, in communal worship, whether it's inside this sanctuary, <laughs> in the parking lot, in the back country of the Sierra Nevada, or even in this virtual space, is more than comfort. It shapes us. It shapes us. When I hear people say, I can find God on my own, thank you very much, in nature or in meditation, I say, great. That's a wonderful practice. I'm glad you're doing that. But they're missing the other 60% or more of the story. Love God and love your neighbor as yourself. There's a community aspect community matters spiritual companions and ministry partners are essential workers even the hermits of the second and third century knew that when they went out to the wilderness they didn't do it completely alone there were other hermits out there they counted on you are an essential worker your showing up makes a difference 
beyond your individual needs, showing up in this virtual space, showing up in learning together in virtual land right now, calling on one another, that's essential Christian work. The call to persevere in Hebrews begins with this scripture that I read. <clears throat> the writer claims that we can persevere because we have confidence, and our confidence rests on two foundational ideas. Jesus opens for us a new and living way. He is our leader over the house of God. And this gives us confidence to do three things. Approach God, hold fast, and help one another. Faith, hope, and love. Worship has communal and moral implications, in addition to liturgical ones. The author makes apparent what should be assumed, that approaching God should be done with sincerity and integrity of a true heart. Ritual purification isn't necessary to approach God in worship because Christ has opened the door for us, cleansed us in the waters of baptism. We're encouraged, even admonished, to hold fast without wavering. This is the hope, hope that God keeps promises. We're encouraged to provoke, pester even one another, to love and good deeds. Yeah, that word provoke in the Greek is kind of means to pester, to pester each other. Now you know why Mike and I are relentless in asking you to consider doing something to serve, to learn, to grow, to extend yourself. The writer uses a word with a sense of disturbing the apathetic and the fearful person into activity. You know, taking action, expressing agency in positive ways is critical for well-being. Later on in Hebrews, we will read, run the race with perseverance. Run the race with Perseverance, looking to Christ, who is the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. At our last Zoom event, fellowship event, we, we talked in small groups. One of the topics was resilience. How are you managing? How are, what's helping you? What is helping us and building strength for us? And later in this same letter, we read about this marathon. Yeah. It is a marathon, this life of faith, and it takes perseverance. The time we are now in is a marathon. Some people have been training for this and they didn't know. Engaging in regular practices of prayer that ground them in God, connecting with other people of faith who share the values of compassion, kindness, and love, service, and generosity. That's a safety net, if ever there was one. Some people have been training in the midst of this crisis, trying new things in order to cope and stay the course, run the race. Many of you have stepped up and ventured out into the virtual world, exercising those little gray cells in ways you didn't even know were possible. We are not out of the woods yet and it will be some time before we are not only as a county a state and a nation but as a world out of these woods we are still in the marathon we need each other to stay strong to have hope to have faith and to express the love of god in everything we say and in everything we do. Amen.